Hi, my name is Javier Albernoz, and today we're going to be looking at audio editing in Pro Tools working with Foley sound effects. We're going to be importing audio files, importing video files, cutting and moving audio, volume automation, and panning automation. So let's take a look now at how we would import a video file so we can work with sound effects of footsteps and match them up with our video. And in the process, we'll take a look at how you would automate panning and volume using uh, keyframes or automation. So if you look here, I've already uh, imported our audio file from our sound effects library. It's footsteps here. And if I Apple M unmute this file and play it back, you'll hear what you got. So you've got some footsteps on some kind of wood deck, wood surface. So let's mute that. I've gone through and for the purposes of this tutorial, I've already cut up using the same techniques, this audio file and grabbed individual footsteps so that we can put it with our video file that we'll import. Now, to import video, you go to File, Import, same way that you would for audio, but instead we are importing video. Now, again, what you're gonna do is go to the desired folder. I've got my video file here. Because we're looking for video rather than audio, it will gray out any type of audio file or other file that is not a video file. So in this case, we've got our .mp4 file that we want here open. So we get our video import options. Now, in the drop-down tab, you have the same options with audio where we can choose where we actually want it. So we want the session start and will we import audio from our video file? Even though we won't use it right now, uh, we let's just go ahead and do it so we see what happens. We keep that box checked, press OK, and you're going to get the same option that pops up where you get to choose the location of your audio file. Again, this is our audio files folder within our Pro Tools session folder. We click open and there we have our video file. You've got some preview frames and the audio that goes with it. I'm going to select both, put them here to the top. I'm going to shrink this a bit. Uh, over here in this drop down tab, you can actually choose whether you see those frames or not. Now, it's often not really super helpful to have those there and it can slow down the playback or cause errors in playback so i will just choose block here so you just see the video as just a block now here you can also choose the playback performance full quality draft or best performance let's go with best performance large video files can have an impact on your system so here it's telling you resolution and frame rate. Now this is very important here as far as the selection of your frame rate. If you look over here, this button will enable or disable your video. Now, if I bring in our video file over here, I'm gonna increase the size a bit over here. You're gonna see that when I press this, it is disabled and enabled. Now. To the left of that, you've got the frame rate that Pro Tools is set to. Now, the video is at 24 frames per second, and so is this Pro Tools session. And that is why this looks the way it does. But let's take a look at what would happen if my session were at a different frame rate than this video. So, what we're going to do is go to Setup and Session. And we're going to get this box here with various options related to the things we chose when we first opened the session. There you see sample rate, bit depth, you've got whether it's interleaved or not, and the audio format. But what we're looking for here is the time code rate. Now there's common uh, video frame rates here, and we are at 24 FPS. So let's say that this session were at 30 FPS. Let's change that. And what happens now is that you see that you've got this number in red. It's telling you there's a mismatch there. So let's go back to setup, session, 
let's make sure that we're at the correct frame rate. So there we go. Now we're back to where we need to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to advance to this point and let's mute our audio and mute the original audio of this video. I'm going to shrink it a bit since we won't be using it and we'll focus on this track. So let's play back and see what happens. So what we're going to do here is I've taken from this file that is the continuous footsteps recorded by the Foley artist and for the sound library. And I've already gone and cut and lined some of them up. So what you would do in this case is what I've already done where I've picked out the sections of footsteps that we want for each. And as you can see, when I grab these and I move them, you're actually going to see the video move along depending on where I am in the timeline. And that can be very useful. So I haven't done all the work here yet because as you can see, some of this already starts this audio file long before the actual footsteps happen. So let's unmute and let's hear this audio file. So this first one is sort of the dragging that happens at the end of the character pushing. There you go. So it's his first footstep kind of with a drag. So if I were to take the trim tool and kind of shrink this a bit, it works really well. As long as there's no material I'm cutting there and we apply our little fade in, you're going to see that it works well with being able to see where do I need to line that up so it really falls where it should. Now, the same is true for all of these, but I've left them this way for the purposes of the tutorial so we can go ahead and do that kind of work already ourselves here. So you can see that we want to line it up to his next step. And where would that fall? It looks like his right leg falls somewhere right around there. So let's take a look at what that look, sounds like. Great. So... We've got most of these look, they, they look pretty, pretty well lined up. Now what happens here, and you can tell, this came from a different file that is uh, part of the sound library where there's some sort of scuffling, right? Uh, or you know, the, the shoes kind of scuffing on the deck. So that works really well, but the rest of them need to be, needed to be actual footsteps. Now, obviously there will he's walking at a different pace than in the library. And that's why we went and picked out individual steps that seemed to work. And we put them there on our audio track. Now, let's move on to uh, automation of volume and panning. As you can tell, the character ends up walking off screen. So what does this mean? More than likely, we're going to have to take into account that he is moving from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. And because he is going off screen, we're probably going to want to decrease the volume as we go. So there's uh, several techniques for doing this, and we've already looked at some of them. Um, but then we'll add to our uh, toolbox automating the volume. So as we've seen before, each individual audio event can be adjusted. So right now, all of these steps are at negative 12 decibels. If we were to go and lower each of these progressively, let's see at what point here does he go off screen. So let's say that once we start getting here to these last four steps, let's turn them each down by about three decibels. So negative 15, negative 18, negative 21 over here, and 24 over here, more or less. Let's see what happens there. So you can hear how the volume starts to decrease because each event is playing at a slightly lower volume, but our track fader is not decreasing. So let's look at another way we can do this. I'm going to undo what I just did there. You can see the waveforms are going back to the way they were. 
at the volume that they were, negative 12. So these are now all playing back at the same volume. Great, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand here in this little arrow on our track and we click and we see here that we've got this automation line or of the uh, volume envelope. So we can change this here to other functions of this track such as mute or pan, but for now we're gonna go with volume. I wanna expand that over and let's kind of try to achieve the same thing we did by lowering the individual volume of these events, but instead do it with automation or sometimes with video editing software, this is referred to as keyframes. So when I hold down command, we're gonna create an event here, we're gonna create another one there, and when I drag down, what we're doing here is automating so that the actual track fader that you see here in your mix window is actually going to decrease as we advance in our timeline, right? So let's see, the track here is Cervantes Steps. Okay, so let's see what happens. Great, so that's effective as he walks off screen. So you can always play around with where that actual fade starts and the pace of it just by basically drawing in more points just as you would with keyframe. So here it starts a bit later. Great, so let's see what happens now when we apply the same concept to panning because the character is moving from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. So what happens if right about here, we start to apply automation to the panning of the left and right and what, how much of the audio is sent to the left or the right speaker. So when we click here, we get another channel here. I'm gonna decrease the size of volume since we're not gonna be using that right now. Let's give ourselves a bit more room. And we're gonna increase the size of that lane here, but we're gonna change it to all pan types. Okay, so what we've got here is our left channel, right channel. So right now we're panned hard left on the left channel and hard right on that channel, right? So uh, basically it's playing out of the e equal amount out, uh, out of both channels. So we hear it on both our left and right channels. But let's say that we want it to move from left to right. How would we achieve that? All right, so same thing. We're gonna hold down command so that we move, we add a point and we can add points on both channels if we'd like here. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move so that left goes from hard left and progressively moves towards the right channel because the character is moving towards the right side of the screen. So I'm gonna match it around to the same point as we did with our volume envelope and let's see what results we get there. Great, now you can hear how with those later footsteps, they are moving off screen. Let's, just so we can hear that better, let's get rid of our volume envelope so the, the volume doesn't change and let's see what happens. Great, and you can hear there how it ends up panned hard right by the time that character makes it over there. So I'm gonna undo that delete, and maybe what we really need is a little bit more volume so it doesn't really completely disappear by the end. And let's play that back. Great, so that's how you use volume panning and automation panning to affect your audio and give some realism to your sound effects.